Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a arch-based distribution that is completely set up and themed for cybersecurity. That's right. It comes with three different variants that you can download from depending on what type of cybersecurity or the cybersecurity need that you have is. We'll take a look at that here in just a few seconds. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is Exodia OS, and it is a highly customized Arch-based distro for cybersecurity fields. It comes with three different variants. It comes with the home variant, the predator variant, and the wireless variant. Okay, now the home variant is your daily driver, which we'll go down here and it will tell you. It is intended to be a daily driver, and it is supposed to be you know, uh, privacy and soft, uh, used for software, uh, privacy and software development. Blah, I can't talk. The Predator version is the one that is made for the Asus Predator laptops. Um, basically, it's, I think, the same as the home. Only difference is, is it has Pred Predator Sense installed, which allows you to control your CPU and GPU fans as well as your keyboard RGBs. And then the wireless edition, well, that's the one that is used for penetration testing, for wireless pen testing. It comes with 400 pre-installed tools and 130 for wireless pen testing. So that's the one that would be more for your professional IT guys or your hackers. Uh, either way, you can find it at uh, exodia-osgithub.io. Also, a thing to note, if you look at their webpage, they have a tab for their wiki, which in their wiki gives you your install instructions, which you click next, and it tells you what to do next. For post-install, well, actually, hold on. Go back to install. You click on the install thing. Then it takes you to a video on how to do it what you can do about it. Okay, then if you go to post install, then it, say you have, you know, whatever release it is, like I'm doing the home one. If I click on here, it tells you how to add the Exodia repos, which are the ones that have all the pen testing software and all that kind of stuff. So if you have the home edition, you add these repos and then you could install any software off of there that you may want. Um, for your cybersecurity. Uh, also, you can fix your Grub theme as well. And then you could also do updates. Uh, you could also fix Rofi. Uh, there are um, a couple of other things that you can do. Um, like you can install the Exodia Grub theme. And you could um, also add menus using um, Vim to edit, to edit the the... the the grub menu, and then you do your uh, make config and it reboots it all and it and it saves it and, and it reboots it and makes it so that it takes the changes, that you apply the changes. Also, they have uh, instructions here on, on how to get GitHub notifications for your polybar, as well as um, launching multibars uh, for multi-monitor support right here for polybar, which is really nice. But you can also find this on the polybar wiki as well. Just so you know, you don't have to do it just here, but this is very nice that they've included that. And then most importantly are the key bindings. What is nice is BSPWM not only does the key bindings, but also you have ab absolutely, you know, application launchers as well that are done here through the polybar as well. So you don't have to worry so much about the key bindings in this um, edition of... Uh, BSPWN for them because they actually enable you to do the mouse support as well. So there's that you can look at. Uh, oh, wait, let's go back to Firefox and take a look and see what version we're running. I want to say it's the newest version. We go to help. We go to about Firefox. You're at 1.07. Yep, we are at the newest version. So to close the focused windows, you see the one is focused, right? You've got the one that's focused, right? So you can do mod c which is the windows c mod c again if you just hold the mod key down i believe that opened up or did that open up something 
either way. Uh, so there's that. Now, it has terminal installed, which I'm pretty sure is Alacrity. Yep, that's Alacrity. Uh, also, by the look at the prompt, that's ZSH for the actual um, shell. Um, it's got PowerShell installed as well. So there's that. <laughs> and then they have web browser, which is Firefox. The file manager, I believe, is Thunar. Let's see here. Let's go to help about. Yep, it is Thunar. So there's that. Uh, the music player is just their standard, regular, old. What is this? Oh, I... hmm, interesting. I don't know what music player this is, but uh, it looks pretty cool. How do you play it? Anyhow, so that's cool. So it's got that. Um, if you look at the poly bar, you have right here, yeah. these are your workspaces. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And really probably nine more, more or less, but really you could assign them. And what it's got is it's got different things assigned to the workspaces. So like if I open up uh, Firefox, it'll open up in workspace two. And see how workspace two highlighted and it came there. So now let's go ahead and open up terminal and it'll be on workspace. It should be on workspace one. Interesting. But it's not. The toggle full screen, it's window, whichever. I wonder if PowerShell opens up in Workspace One. Yeah, PowerShell opens up in Workspace One. And it opens up full screen as well. I can open up as full screen or floating. So so you see that there's they have different apps. You can do that in the uh, config file to assign certain apps to certain workspaces. So there, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, then it's got your Wi-Fi connection if it's showing your internet speed, although it's not Wi-Fi, it's actually cabled. Then it's got what I'm on. I have a tiled window manager selected versus, you know, stacked or whatever, master stack or, you know, whichever different layouts they have available. Then it's got the music player, and then it's got updates here that need to be done, which I am not going to do that right now because, you know what, let's not. Uh, it's going to take a while, and I just want to show you this. So, But what's nice is you can right-click on their desktop, and you can pull down your applications. So in applications, you have accessories, which have got your file manager, your calculator, Bayou Boo Terminal, NeoVim, Kavunta Manager, Plank, so you can actually start a, a, a dock at the bottom, Stacer, which is nice. Stacer, when you look at it, this is a pretty awesome cleaning tool. This can clean. It can optimize. It can handle your disks, your disk space, as well. Uh, it can do a lot, a lot for you. Um, it's a very. It's to me, it's somewhat of the CC cleaner that's available in uh, Windows. It, you can set, you know, start and start and, uh, applications that that start up and shut down at startup. I mean, it's pretty cool what it can do. So. You might want to take a look at that later on if you uh, feel that you need uh, a utility like that. Um, it's pretty cool. It's really, really cool. So it's got, they've got Stacer installed. Um, they have regular terminal, Vim, X Archiver, and Nitrogen, which draws your wallpapers. Under development, they've got Genie, Icon Browser, and Meld. Uh, graphics, they have gpic gwenview viewinator internet they've got the avahi ssh and vnc servers elinks firefox for security team putting chrome in is kind of a weak move but you know they i i get it they did it because it's a home home version they've got links mail reader and web browser which is basically another de derivative of firefox multimedia they have the echo mixer mv24 hda jack retask hdsp conf HDSP mixer, H HWMI uh, volume, mix volume, HW mix volume, sorry, pa um, pulse audio equalizer, uh, Pavu, the Q4L2, which is your test utility and your capture utility for your webcam. And then, of course, they've got MPV as your, as your, as your video player. For Office, they've only got Atrial, which is a PDF viewer. Um, under other, they've got Rofi. 
and the Rofi theme selector, which you launch Rofi by hitting the, I believe the mod W button. Yep. See, and there's your theme right there. So that's what they have under under other under settings you have the usual suspects you have you know your appearance your bluetooth adapters bluetooth manager color profiles customized look and feel default display file settings manager you know yada 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 just your typical standard stuff for settings and then of course under system you have about exodia you have the alacrity terminal you have a vahi uh zero config browser bulk rename you know disk usage disk usage analyzer g parted hardware uh locality ls top really then they've got h top we'll launch h top to take a look at what we've got going on here and what the heck why did it do that Let's type in H top and see if it launches. There we go. Now it launches. I'm only using 843 or 800 and, sorry, 829 megs of RAM, uh, which is pretty light. Um, only about 3% of my processors are being used altogether. You know, not bad. No, I guess it's a little bit more, about 10%, 15%. Either way, it looks pretty good. It's lightweight. Um, uh, there, you know, it runs pretty smoothly. It is a virtual machine, so I can't expect much out of it. You know, it's got your, uh, manager printing, your PowerShell. It's got Thunar. Oh, it's got time shift installed, so you can do backups and, um, restore points, uh, X sensors, JG menu and Ranger, which is a terminal, um, file manager, JG menu. This is what that looks like. That's the one that when you click on your desktop pops up. Your right click does so there's that and then for uh <clears throat> of course you got the exit button to exit out and then bspwm they have the edit config file which if you launch it here's your config file this is where you could assign all kinds of different things for like um key bindings you know apps to open at launch w ways to handle windows all that good stuff so yeah this is uh this is pretty cool so that you can go right there to that so they've created that now let's right click again and then of course you click the restart it restarts bwspm so if you have made any changes to your config file you can certainly do restart really quickly just like that um this is the welcome window that pops up every time that you restart bspwm so anyhow there you have it if you have any questions uh, or any any questions or any comments about this and you've used this before, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Like I said, it's something I knew I just found. I've never heard of it. Um, it's Arch-based. It's got AUR installed. It has themes already. Oh, that's what I forgot to show you guys. Let's go back to it. So if you hit Control-Alt-T for themes... You could switch between themes like uh, right now. I, I believe I'm on the Chad one, but if I let's click Emilia, double click on it. And it'll apply it. And that looks horrible. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But so, I mean, so there's that. <clears throat> let's do control alt T and let's go back to the Chad. And there you go. There you have it. Just like that, we're back at it. So anyhow, that is kind of cool. They're, they have several different themes there that you can pick from, but that, that's kind of a little bit of an added bonus. So like I said, guys, anything I forgot to say or anything I forgot to mention or you know something more or current about this, please uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Please don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Uh, also, you guys, we're at 580 viewers. Um, I really am grateful for all you guys and all the, the subscribers that I have. Uh, look forward to, to the new year coming up. And I love, look forward to the new things that are coming out with Linux in the next year. So you guys stay blessed, keep doing what you do, and y'all keep on Linuxing, all right? Thank you so much.